What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Nathan Ng, and I'll be your host for our patch 13.1b low elo tier list analysis. We're making some updates and introducing a difficulty and carry potential bar to provide more insight and clarity regarding our top picks for each role. Expect to see these in future videos as well. These two skills will range from 1 to 7, 1 being either the easiest or lowest, while 7 meaning the hardest and strongest. I'll elaborate a bit more during the video to avoid any confusion, but these are a great addition as it's also important to note how difficult a champion is to play. That being said, subscribe so you don't miss out on future content like this, and let's get started. Of course, we'll start things off in the top lane. Here's a quick rundown of our tier list. If you want the most straightforward champion with an insane amount of carry potential, look no further than Garen, the Might of Demacia. While there are definitely patches where that title feels like a big meme, this definitely is not one of them. Garen is simple and sometimes less is more. Think about it like this. If a champion can easily output their max damage, what exactly is their counterplay? Ultimately, you have to outplay Garen with good spacing and movement, and those are going to be a little bit lacking in low elo. Even in high elo, Garen is going to be on a rampage since he basically is the ultimate stat check champion and can easily win any trade or fight. Since he's easy to master, our analysts heavily suggest Garen for low elo players looking to climb. He's not only easy, but he's also very good, so don't sleep on him. He's rated 1 out of 7 in difficulty, and 7 out of 7 for carry potential. So, a perfect score, so pick him up whether you're a top lane main or just looking for someone to play when autofill. Our next OB pick is going to be Olaf. He's a little bit harder to play, ranked at 4 out of 7, but is still a great carry with a 5 out of 7 rating. However, I do want to note that it's really only difficult to learn him in the beginning. Once you get some practice in and understand how to use his W and proper spell rotations, you'll have no problem hard carrying your games. What makes Olaf so strong is that he snowballs ridiculously hard. Once you're ahead, you're literally going to run a train on your opponents. Over and over again, you can chase down your opponents for kills and potentially even 1v2 ganks when you're ahead. Since he's able to be immune to crowd control, there's nothing that can get in your way of winning teamfights as long as you have enough damage and durability to push through the heat of fights. Now, the most notorious champion to break the rules is Trindamir. He's literally a cheater since he's able to avoid death. Trindamir really isn't that hard. The only difficult part is to remember to press R and also to decide whether you want to use Q or hold it for more damage. Trindamir has insane mobility with his E and deals insane damage on top of that. What's scarier than a champion who outdamages you, can chase you, and who you can kill? As one of the most oppressive champions in the game, low elo players will agree that he's a huge nuisance to deal with. He, along the other two picks that we mentioned, are easily pick or banned. Next, let's run through the jungle. Again, we'll start with a quick look at their tier list for this patch. Our first OP pick in the jungle is Udyr. He is not difficult to learn and is a great pick overall because of his strong ganks, as well as the fact that you can play him either AD or AP based on your team's needs. Once you learn how to properly rotate between stances, you'll easily win your team fights with some crucial lockdown, high damage, and insane durability. While you technically can just kite Udyr, it's not that easy avoiding ganks from him. The moment he's behind you, it's certain that you're going to be stunned since he'll eventually catch you. If you burn flash to escape, chances are you're going to get ganked again and die for sure the second time around. If you guys want to know some rotations for Udyr, basically you just switch forms, auto attack twice, and then switch again. This way you can utilize his passive most efficiently. Next is Maokai. He's one of the easiest junglers to play with a great clear speed, easy combos, and incredible utility. His E is heavily underrated, as he can control entrances or bushes that heavily pressures objectives as a result. That being said, Maokai has a moderate amount of carry potential. He brings an insane amount of utility, gank power, and crowd control, but if you don't have a duo or a teammate that can take advantage of these strengths, it can be a little bit harder to win. That being said, if you're picking your ganks well, you should have no problem getting your allies ahead to outright win fights. Our final OP pick is going to be Wukong. Unfortunately, he's on the tougher side of junglers, but definitely isn't the hardest. The biggest struggle is that his clear speed is mediocre, and his ganks aren't that strong. Once you hit level 6 and get your ultimate, however, it's a completely different story. He's absolutely worth the time invested, however, because he's so good at winning your games for you. Wukong deals stupid amounts of damage and is easily one of the best teamfighters in the game, because of his invisibility and ultimate knockup. In the current meta, his item build is outright broken, and there's no doubt that he's a little bit overtuned at the moment. Alright, let's run through the mid lane tier list next. Check it out. Leading in this mid lane, we have Melzahar. He's super easy, but admittedly isn't the hardest carry. Definitely worth picking him up though, for how little time you have to invest, you get a huge payout. He's straightforward and has some incredible wave clear that you can abuse. After pushing in waves, you can recall to pick up items or instead gank one of your side lanes and start applying heavy pressure. If you want to pick Melzahar, I heavily suggest duoing, as this will give you the best reward for the amount of utility that he brings. Malzahar carries the game with his powerful ultimate and how he's able to easily set up the team for success. Next, we have Swain. He's not the hardest champion to learn and is a great carry because of his ability to frontline while dealing high damage. 
Swain is one of the best team fighters in the current meta, especially once he scaled up and finishes his core items. What makes him difficult is that you need to land your abilities to really get the most out of him, obviously, and it can also take some time to learn how to optimally position yourself in fights. Go in too deep and you're gonna get blown up before you can deal any real damage. It's about showing restraint where it matters. The longer the fights, the better for Swain. Finally, we have Yone. Like Swain, he's around the middle of the pack in terms of difficulty, but again, is one of the strongest carries in the game right now. One tip our analysts have is to consider that you'll always want to adjust your strategy or just how to use your skills based on your matchup. The game plan is not the same against every opponent. That said, he does bring some powerful wave clear, which lets you easily farm minions or find opportunities to roam. In terms of carry potential, with the recent Infinity Edge changes, he's even stronger than before with the build diversity that's opened up. Yone has some of the best scaling in the game, so remember you can always play for the late game with him. Moving on, let's talk about the bottom lane. Here's this patch's list of bot laners and marksmen. First up we have Samira. Not super difficult to learn, but you'll want to have some practice with her landing combos correctly and quickly stacking up to the S rank during fights. Another important thing to learn is how to best use her W as it literally decides the outcome of skirmishes or fights. With the huge changes this patch, Samira's build path has opened up significantly, making her spike even faster than before and thus snowball even harder than before. When she pulls ahead, there's no coming back for the enemy team, so make sure to fight as much as possible when you can pick up those early kills. Next we have Trisana who's equally as potent as Samira. She snowballs ridiculously hard with how much distance that she can cover with her W, and also because of her scaling. Late game Trisana is no joke with her insane range, self peel, and high damage. The hardest part about playing Trisana is learning how to farm up properly, so make sure to pull a replay of your favorite pro players and study for a bit. You'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. Our last bottom lane OP pick here is Lucian. Lucian is certainly a harder marksman to pick up. You need to be efficient with how you weave in basic attacks between your abilities and also might need to go through some growing pains, getting used to his lower than average attack range. Once you've learned him though, you'll definitely come to love his burst damage as well as his S plus tier mobility. With changes to Novori Quick Blades, Lucian's build path has also changed this path and he spikes a lot earlier than before. Another thing to note is that Lucian's success depends heavily on your support pick, so for best results make sure to duel with a friend. Finally, we have supports and a few different tier lists to consider as there's a huge variety. For engaged supports, our top pick for this patch is Nautilus. He's straightforward and has one of the easier hooks to hit. Once you land it, the rest of the combo is straightforward and he has an insane amount of crowd control. This is why if you decide to roam, you're going to be helping your solo laners pick up some free kills. Nautilus is also a great carry with the CC chain, basically taking an enemy of choice out of the team fight altogether. He's also a powerful laner with the suffocating pressure that he applies early on. For enchanters, look no further than Nami. It can be a little bit challenging at first, you'll want to take note of your positioning and will definitely want some practice landing your Q and ultimate. Once you get comfortable with those, however, you'll find that Nami brings way too much utility to the table. Her E for a basic ability is absolutely game changer as it enables one of your teammates to hunt down their targets or kite them if they're getting dove. During the laning phase, her W is a powerful poke tool that allows her and her lane partner to heal. As one of the strongest laners, it's easy for her to dominate and get her partner ahead. For a carry or poke style of support, you'll want to pick Heimerdinger this patch. He's simple enough, and the only hard part is learning how to effectively position your turrets. Heimerdinger's carry potential is high up there, as he can basically 1v2 lanes with his ridiculous amount of poke damage, crowd control, and turrets. Cutting enemies while his turrets go crazy is how he can easily turn around countless ganks or initially poor fights. As the game progresses, Heimer's ultimate turret or grenade allows him to quickly swing the tide of fights. That wraps up our low elo tier list for patch 13.1b. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and like always, feel free to let us know your thoughts or any feedback they have for us in the comments. Thank you guys so much, good luck on this patch, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.